patient play from Everton. Chance here for Everton. Driven across the what? Place goal. What? Still alive here. Oh, it's lost its purpose. It was a game that brought us together. Now it's a game that divides us. This shows more hate than the true meaning. Oh. You know, as an Evertonian. Well, as an Evertonian, it's a horrible feeling knowing that Liverpool can win the league against us. What if they don't void the league and the virus keeps spreading? And then they could cancel the league next year. What if the virus does keep spreading and I can't see my mates? And I can't play Sunday League football for a few months or longer? Before Pickford sends it long. Is that a risk that we should take? Personally, I don't think it's a risk that they should take. Just that touch that took it up. You know, that's why they should cancel the league before it gets worse. Oh, you know, it's one thing to play with our feet, but to play with our heart, it's another. You know, and how are the bottom three teams supposed to deal with this current situation? How are they supposed to fight out a relegation? Hey, and then to top it off, teams aren't even going to be playing in the actual grounds. That's like asking Man City to play in Africa. It's just stupid. Never end them buzz with me alarm going off. Is that the day already? They don't see the world like I see it. There's no fear in their eyes. It's like a, a black hole in my stomach, swallowing me up with fear and loneliness, depression. When you do the clap for the NHS, you know, the pots and the pans and that. Well, I know none of that's meant for me. I just get a, a stare and a glare. So I'm just merely a factory worker of them. Just another number in their game. Like most people are. Well, everyone sees it that way. Like, well, you know, there's no precautions in our work. No... Masks or gloves or anything. We could easily catch something. Imagine putting yourself in my shoes. I take the same risks as, as people in the NHS, but no one gives me any respect. No respect. Nobody even notices me. Nobody. <sighs> Need a change. You know, I spend my days lonely and my nights even lonelier. Miss me family. Miss me friends. What could I do for the change? Oh, new job. New lifestyle, maybe. I'm not even talking to anyone. Look. No one there. Just in a car park, speak retail park, talking to myself. Oh, Jesus. I'm with what's your name? Eddie. Eddie. There is nothing like a man pushing you in your wheel in a wheelchair to make you feel like an owl bag. <laughs> I didn't realise the things we all take for granted. The little things that mm -hmm. I didn't learn to appreciate before the global pandemic. Like walks. Sit, Minnie. Sit. When my mum made me go for a walk, I mostly said no. I guess I always thought I could go outside and walk any time I wanted to. Now I have realised how precious the freedom to breathe in fresh air and explore even my own town is. I totally relate to a dog's way of life. I jump up and down excitedly when putting my coat on, ready to go for a walk. Escaping from reality with my dog is really relaxing. 
It helps me refresh my mind. And by putting it off, I realized I was neglecting the refueling of my body and mind. It was becoming a shadow of my existence. My mental health was massively affected. <laughs> A subject that we should just normalize and show it in its true darkness because it's something that never gets taken seriously. People are taking their lives because of it. It's affecting people all over the globe in different ways. Depression, anxiety, low self-esteem, and panic attacks are just some of the things that people won't speak up about. It's affected me so much during lockdown. Even not seeing me friends. It really affected me. <laughs> I miss the little things. <laughs> like just walking past the trees as they were shaking from the wind. It's been a roller coaster ride for me. One minute, I'm feeling on top of the world. And the next, well, I feel like I'm falling down and I'll never come back up. This monologue was written by Ryan, a young man. Ryan. It's beautiful and it touched me deeply. Thank you for letting me read it. My name is Fina Arouche.